You had a friend called Des. Des. Was this before you went to Australia, Des? Yes, Des was my school friend, yes. And he lived in Bristol? No. Uh, at one stage he lived quite near where I lived. Um, uh, then he moved to Newport and he was working at a, a golf club as a maitre d. And then he moved to Bristol, you know. But um, this was before I was uh, was doing the thing, the Munros. But I go back to that because there's an anecdote you've told oh, before yes. where you dressed up. Yes, that's right. We used to get, on a Saturday afternoon, we used to go to um, uh, Cardiff for a night out. And the place then, when, when I was about 15, 16, was the Angel Hotel, right opposite Cardiff Castle. And it is no longer a gay haunt. Because um, I've Googled it many times. And um, anyway, this day we were going, to, he'd moved to Bristol. So we got the train because I always liked to shock him, you know, because he was a bit, he wouldn't. Stiff. <laughs> you know, when I used to camp on, he used to say, oh, don't, <laughs> don't do He's that. very bashful. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you call it that. And um, this day I planned, I uh, took some of my um, uh, skirt and my mother's and I had a wig, an old wig that I'd bought from CNAs, which was really a hat, but it was made out of bath mat material, fluffy. And you could comb, people used to buy it as a wig and they comb it into different, anyway, I had all this in a bag and I told him, uh, he asked what was in the bag, and I said, well, it's my, um, just stuff for stay in the weekend. And um, anyway, uh, we got on the train, and in those days, they were steam trains, right? So I said to him, I said, I've got to get, we got on the train at Newport, and we were go to go, direct to Bristol. So I got into the um, the toilet on the train, locked the door, and very hurriedly took all my boys' clothes off, stuffed them in the bag I had, I put on a skirt, a pair of mum's stockings, which well, there were no pantyhose around in those days. It was just a bit of elastic. So I got some elastic to keep them up, and I had a skirt to there, a pair of shoes, um, a, a blouse and a coat. And I put a bit of lipstick on and a bit of eyebrow and a bit of powder that I had, I'd taken from home. And uh, this took a good half an hour, maybe longer to do all this. And um, every now and again, he'd come and knock at the door and say, are you all right, Stan? You know. And you were busy getting ready with yeah. your makeup and outfit. Yes, I'll, I said I'll be there soon. Anyway, I finally came out the door because he was waiting in the corridor. You know, the, the old steam trains had a corridor up to mm. one side and then the seating that side. So I opened the door and I came out in drag. Well, he nearly keeled over. He, he had such a shot. He's, you know, oh, you've heard the expression gobsmacked. He was gobsmacked full on. And he said, oh, you can't. Oh, oh what, what are you doing? Oh, so we, and then he laughed. So we're waiting to get to, in the corridor we stood of the train and, um, me trying to act feminine, and uh, we got the train pulled in before Bristol because we, we had it worked out. We got off the train at Bristol and straight through the gate onto a bus. The bus he got the bus to his 
flat. And the bus is left very, you know, not in between, not, not much break in between, every five minutes or so, whatever. And um, it didn't. It stopped at the station before <laughs> Bristol. And it said, all change. The Bristol train is over the footbridge on platform two or whatever. <sighs> so we had to get off the train. And you were still enjoying it? And this man was there and he opened the door for me. He didn't have a fucking clue. <laughs> Anyway, we're walking down the platform and all of a sudden I feel the elastic that are holding my nylons up, pant, uh, stockings starting to ride down towards my knees and we had to go up over the bridge and down the other side. So by the time I got to the other side, the pants were down around my ankles, the stockings. So I had to race into the ladies and pull them up. And there was a girl doing her makeup in the mirror and she didn't take any notice whatsoever. She didn't have a clue. <laughs> didn't have a clue. <laughs> Probably because I was so bold about it. And did you spend the rest of the day? No, we, we uh, waited and the train was only about two minutes, three or four minutes, something like that. And we got on the train and got off at Bristol. We went out of the, got out the platform, out through the barrier, straight onto the bus. Five minutes later, stopped outside where he, he had a flat. And we raced into the flat and closed the door and we screamed our tits off. <laughs> and he was immediately on the phone to a friend of ours, Peter. And he picked up the phone and he said, Peter, you'll never get, you'll never guess what Stan's done. He's come all the way from Newport on the train in drag. That's true. 